Good evening. We'll call to order a regular meeting of the Mayor and Board of Trustees of the Village of Woodridge and request mm -hmm. Clerk Neistrom to please call the roll. Trustee Kagan. Present. Trustee Abbott. Present. Trustee Pittenger. Present. Trustee Banks. Present. Trustee Beavers. Present. Trustee Cunningham. Present. Mayor Murphy. Present. Quorum is established. Please stand for a moment of silence and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance led this evening by Trustee Abbott. Pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and, and to, to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty and justice for all. We're fortunate this evening to have a number of opportunities to present awards and presentations and recognition. And for the purposes of proceeding, I would uh, invite Chief Heron to please proceed. Thank you, Mayor. First award I have is a military award. These military awards are typically given to uh, our officers that serve uh, in the service, uh, in this particular case overseas. Uh, Gunnery Sergeant Guerra, or Gunny Guerra as he's referred to, uh, served in such a capacity, and I'd like to uh, give you a little bit of a bio on him and maybe a little bit about the award uh, prior to me actually giving him the award. Jimmy was hired uh, actually about nine years ago on April 8th in 2002. Uh, we got him, as we do most of our people, from other police agencies. He too, we got from the Cook County Sheriff's Department where he worked in the Criminal Courts Division. Jimmy also serves as an undercover agent for Dumeg and has actually received a, uh, a, a unit citation award for the work that he did with them. Jimmy, uh, just for us, has many awards in his file already and many letters uh, just in the time that he's been with us. And like I said, he's also a gunnery sergeant for the United States Marine Corps. And he still is a uh, is reservist, and we are very happy to have him back uh, safe after his third, third tour with us. Uh, I don't know if that's total is three or is I've got four deployments. four deployments three with us so uh, we we're very happy to have him but let me talk about his deployments too his first deployment with us was in 2004 where he actually uh, went to Iraq and was a sniper that's what he was trained to be uh, he went and came back uh, safely and we were very happy to have him back in 2004 in 2007 and 2008 he was again deployed to uh, to Iraq where he was a liaison and an instructor for law enforcement, believe it or not, uh, because of his, maybe because of your chosen career, actually how good he is, but he is a, uh, was, was deployed to teach the Iraqi police to police in the American way, uh, which he did and uh, came back with yet a lot of stories as well. The third time and the last time that we've had, uh, 2010 to 2011, this time he went to Afghanistan. Uh, Afghanistan, he uh, served to do the same, to serve to train the Afghanistan police. Uh, although this wasn't quite as nice of a deployment as you had before, this was a little bit, uh, little bit more remote than he had had in the past. Uh, but he, he too, what he had done was uh, train Afghanistan police, the American policing way, in an effort to, uh, to help them police and to uh, pull civil, uh, uh, keep, keep civil rest. Good. So, so people can, uh, can, can actually be free like we are here. Um, Jimmy has uh, gone to college. He's bought, gone both to Wright College in Chicago and Triton College in River Grove in an attempt for his degree, and he's still working with that. He lives with his wife, Andrea, and has three children. And if I can, I'd like to present this plaque to him. This is a military service award presented to Gunnery Sergeant James Guerra. On June in 2010, Jimmy Guerra was activated to military duty. He was stationed in Afghanistan as a gunnery sergeant, where he was assigned as a military police advisor for the Afghan National Security Forces. He returned to the United States in June of 2011. The Woodridge Police Depart Department honors Jimmy Guerra for his service to our country. We are honored to be recognizing you with this military award and proud to have you back with the department.
And uh, Officer Guerra, on behalf of the citizens of our community, we want to uh, congratulate you and, and honor you. We're very fortunate to have you with our department and very fortunate that individuals like you serve our country in other capacities, in your case with the United States Marines. So again, on behalf of the department, your fellow officers that are here tonight, other staff members and our citizens, thank you and congratulations. We also have an opportunity to uh, be introduced to a new employee, Chief Heron. Heron <clears throat> Boyd, this is Chrissy Matchin. She is um, new, but not new with us. Um, Christy uh, started exactly two years ago today with us. Uh, as I was re going through it, uh, recognized that it was exactly two years ago. As soon as we got her, we did what we do with most recruits. We sent her to the city of Chicago or to one of the academies to be trained, which is what she did. But because of circumstances beyond her control, um, she, it took her a while to start her field training program. She is um, she's starting her new beginning about two weeks ago. She started her field training program, cleared everything that we needed her to clear. Um, but you know, what's kind of interesting is, as I said with Jimmy Guerra, we take people from other departments, and we took the same thing with, with Christy. She was with the Naperville Park District Police, which doesn't seem to be unusual, uh, because that's what we do. We take people from other agencies. Her supervisor, though, was Carl Schnippen, who's the chief of police over at the Naperville Park District. So when Christy got here, she knew a lot more about us than we knew about <laughs> her, because she had been given a lot of information. <clears throat> But, you know, one of the things that I really uh, want to tell you, uh, something that you don't know about Christy, is that she is absolutely the best attitude of anybody that I have ever met. Um, she had been faced through this last two years with what seemed to be uh, re some really serious issues that she had had from, from the academy. But she always maintained an extremely positive attitude. And she knew what her goal was. Her goal was to be a Woodridge police officer, and she always kept that in mind. And she always drove herself to be in that goal, no matter what had happened, no matter what had been thrown her way. She always knew that she wanted to be an officer here, and she told me, in no uncertain terms, that she would be a Woodridge police officer with us. She's always kept a smile on her face. She hasn't smiled too much yet, so she's nervous, because she knows she's going to give a speech in just a minute. <laughs> um, and, but she told everybody, too. They said, you know, here's what you have to do. She goes, no, I don't need to do that. You don't realize I'm going to be an officer here, and I will. And she drove to that and drove to that until a point that it came a couple of weeks ago, and she proved to us that she is absolutely right. So we're very happy to have her here with us. We're very happy to have your attitude with us, and we hope that it serves you well through your career. And um, we know that it has so far, and we look forward to the next well, 35 or 36 years that you're going to give us, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, there's a little bit about Christy, and we're very happy to have her with us. And it took us a couple of years to get her started, but she started and on her way. And Officer Machtana, on behalf of the Village of Woodridge, my fellow elected officials, and the citizens of our community, we want to welcome you to Woodridge. We have a model department, and you have individuals, some of whom are here tonight, that are mentors and are excellent individuals to look forward to working with through the coming years. We particularly appreciate your perseverance in coming in two years to the department. Congratulations. We also have a number of service anniversaries and I would like to call forward Chris Bethel and Judy Hansen to join me at the podium. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening. I'd like to introduce you to Judy Hansen, who's an administrative assistant in the Public Works Department. Uh, she was hired uh, for the village back in September of 1996 in the position of office associate, and then was promoted into her current position in, in 1998. Uh, in her, uh, her duties, she provides support uh, and assistance, uh, sometimes direction, to myself and the assistant director, our superintendent, our foreman, our engineering staff, our operations staff, in reality, everyone in, in the department, uh, she's really a central cog in our uh, operations. Um, one of the roles she plays is really one of the most important ones in the department, and she's the first point of contact with the, uh, the public. Um, so she's able to resolve a, a variety of uh, 
very sometimes unusual, uh, sometimes high frequency calls that may come in um, and help satisfy people or get it to the right uh, staff members in the department to, uh, to address it. Um, that's in addition to her other responsibilities. She handles our grant management and uh, follow-up and paperwork, uh, payroll, as well as helping to, to research and analyze uh, operational uh, issues for us. I think her dedication and willing to assist with any project or issue is really what, what shines through. Um, when we had the, uh, the blizzard this past February, uh, Judy willingly stayed with us through that critical first shift as we were getting things set up, stayed through us with the night. Uh, she went home and slept and then was right back with us again the next day, uh, really helping to, to run what was a very long and difficult operation. Um, as I was making some notes for tonight, it struck me it was very hard to believe that it, five years had already passed since we were last here with Judy, and I had the, the honor to talk about service anniversary at that time. But it made me think about how lucky we are to, to have employees like Judy who, for 15 years, have been dedicated and loyal to provide the institutional knowledge that has been an institution She's been accident free, uh, which is great. Uh, <laughs> um, as well as participating in, in various <coughs> committees. And, of the quarter uh, in 1998 after being selected uh, to that honor by the uh, EAC. Um, she also lives here in Woodridge and helps to, to contribute to the betterment of the community through her involvement with JCs. Judy, on behalf of my fellow elected officials and citizens, we want to congratulate you on the 15th anniversary of your service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to call forward Peggy Halleck and Rosemary Sharp, who we're going to be recognizing for 10 years of service. Well, Rosemary is a familiar face to everyone. She is our administrative assistant in the administration department. She previously served as our office associate for six years. Um, a few things about Rosemary, what she's known for. Her willingness to assist, her attention to detail, her creativity, she comes up with the theme every year for State of the Village, um, her perseverance, her amazing work ethic, her pursuit of perfection in everything she does. Rosemary's approach to the service to the village is probably best described as stewardship. It's inherent in her. Uh, her mission every day is to come to work to make a of better place. And it's obvious in all the work that she does. She's an excellent ambassador to the village and she provides excellent and outstanding customer service. She was selected as employee of the quarter in 2004. And she's been nominated many times by those who saw and her with her fellow employees. She has the distinction. And like you said, but Judy, I don't want to jinx this. <laughs> she has the distinction of being our only employee with more than five years of service who has never taken a sick day. I don't want to ruin that. Um, it was really hard to find a time for Rosemary to come here to, to receive this um, honor because, in fact, her anniversary was early. Never one, she doesn't want to miss here, she doesn't want to miss there because it's really important to her the work that she does there. So we appreciate her giving up a night. She's going to do it again for Tommy. So we try not to ask that too often. She lives here in Woodridge with her husband, Rich. They raised their two kids here. RJ and Reagan. And Reagan is going to be even closer. So she won't be in Woodridge, but she'll be right next door. And RJ is wherever in the world, but he's being taken, correct? Um, Rosemary is known for her love of families and her caretaking of all her fellow employees. Uh, thank you so much for your time here. And Rosemary, on behalf of my fellow employees, and the citizens of the English, we want to congratulate you for your family and experience in the English University. Thank you for your listening. You are a wonderful employee of the administration of the French, and we look forward to your success. Thank you. In particular, we want to follow you on the record. Thank <laughs> you.
Call me when she's absent. But this is a small momentum. Congratulations. Michael Mays could please step forward. We're going to recognize Jenny Walden. You know, as a uh, director, this is one of the uh, greatest joys about this job is recognizing the, uh, the service of employees. And uh, I've got uh, yeah. Jenny Walden uh, started with us on August 21st, 2006. She serves the community and the department in two key roles. She, as the planner, takes on the majority of the department. That includes her leading the effort uh, to uh, negotiate the annexation agreements with some of the commercial properties that have occurred over the last couple of years. I appreciate her uh, thoughtful guidance um, on zoning and uh, planning matters. And over the years, I've, I've grown to rely more and more on that. So thank you, Jenny, for that. Uh, her other primary role is uh, economic development. And for some of you, you heard uh, about some of this and, and some of what Jenny does at the um, last month's topic forum on building a healthy community. Um, one of the important things that Jenny does for the department is promoting available sites for development within the village. Jenny doesn't take no for an answer, or I should say she doesn't uh, take no response for an answer. <laughs> she will doggedly go after uh, retailers and businesses to encourage them uh, to, to look at sites within the village. She uh, led the efforts earlier this year with the text amendments that uh, help support businesses and their efforts. Um, the opportunity newsletters that you see that help to promote the community, the press releases that our department puts together are because of your efforts. Talking about the, the good things that are occurring within the The success of the business relocation packet is a result of Jenny's efforts. Uh, she where Jenny has been instrumental in helping the department and the community. Um, she serves the department as the uh, lead coordinator for community development block grant uh, applications and working with Public Works, working with the Park District to uh, get uh, grants into the county uh, so that the community can benefit. Um, last year, she was part of the budget task force that helped to put together the uh, binders, the budget binders that you received that help to uh, provide additional information both to the board as well as to the community regarding the budget. Um, and also she's our go-to person as it relates to Jenny was selected as employee of the quarter in April of 2009 and later on that year selected as employee of the year. So those are uh, great recognitions of and examples of her dedication uh, to the community and to the department. Uh, she studied, tested, and obtained her AICP, uh, American Institute of Certified Planners certification. She served on the advisory committee. And in closing, I just want to thank you personally and also on behalf of the department for your excellent service to the department Perfect. And Jenny, on behalf of you, there isn't a, a grand opening or a ribbon cutting that I don't go to where at some point the president or the CEO doesn't pull me aside and tell me what an outstanding planning Katie Jensen. <clears throat>
Started with the delayed in September. Well, she was hired as our associate planner and served us very well in that capacity. We were able to tap her background and experience to help us a couple years later with the development of GIS within the community. Along with uh, Bob Myers and the Public Works Department, they've developed a blueprint for how Woodridge can move forward with GIS, geographic information systems development and have provided a solid foundation for its ongoing uh, development. A couple of early accomplishments include the development of the uh, My Woodridge, which is a valuable online mapping tool that gives residents and businesses 24-7 um, access to community information. As well as uh, uh, Katie created the new economic development page on the village's website. This has been very instrumental in our economic development efforts to bring the information that developers and businesses are looking for uh, to their fingertips, easy access, uh, more direct access, because to be competitive, it's very important uh, for uh, Woodridge. Um, and uh, in addition to that, uh, community development relies on Katie heavily on mapping and graphic capabilities. During the last five years, Katie has been an essential part of our success in fulfilling those department responsibilities. Katie has also given back to uh, the organization and the community. She has served as the chair of the uh, Employee Advisory Committee and the Economic Committee for several years. So I want to thank you personally for your leadership. I know that uh, her involvement um, has helped to make She uh, has served on the uh, Wellness Committee, and she uh, coached intramural uh, basketball in the park district for two seasons. Katie's been uh, recognized for her contributions by being selected as uh, Employee of the Quarter in April 2008. And while we recognize her five years of service tonight, we're also saying goodbye uh, and wishing her well. Katie's accepted the position as a GI analyst with Regis, which is in uh, Grand Rapids, uh, Michigan. So, Katie, personally, thank you very much for the years of dedication to the department. I know that I pray the benefit of her. I would invite uh, Chief Heron to please come uh, to the podium. <clears throat> we've, issued, uh, we've issued a proclamation that I would like to share in part and, and present to uh, Chief Heron. Whereas people of all ages and walks of life across America and around the world collectively witnessed an event of immense tragedy on September 11, 2001. And whereas the events of that day instantly transformed nearly everyone's lives, some through personal loss and many others through an unfamiliar sense of individual and national vulnerability. And whereas an unprecedented historic bonding of Americans arose from the collective shock, unifying the country in an outpouring of national spirit, pride, selfishness, generosity, courage, and service. And whereas many brave people heroically, tirelessly, and courageously participated in an extraordinarily difficult and dangerous rescue and recovery effort, in some cases voluntarily putting their own well-being at risk. And whereas September 11th will never and should never be just another day 
in the hearts and minds of all Americans. Whereas September 11, 2011, will be the 10th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks on America. And whereas many citizens may wish to memorialize September 11 by engaging in or making a plan to engage in personal and individual acts of community service or other giving activities as part of a solemn day of remembrance and tribute. And whereas on March 19, 2009, the United States Congress passed legislation authorizing the establishment of September 11th as a federally recognized National Day of Service and President Barack Obama signed into law in April of 2009. And whereas the Village of Woodridge Police Department will recognize this historic event, a National Day of Service and Remembrance, on September 11, 2011, with a ceremony and raising of the American flag, and all interested Americans are encouraged to participate in this observance through moments of silence, the flying of the flag of the United States at half staff, as well as community service and charitable activities in tribute and remembrance. Now, therefore, I, William F. Murphy, Mayor of the Village of Woodridge, DuPage, will and Cook County, by virtue of my office, to hereby proclaim September 11, 2011, as 9-11 Day of Service and Remembrance in the Village of Woodridge, in a tribute to all the victims of 9-11 and the many who rose to service in response to the 9-11 terrorist attacks, and urge all citizens to observe September 11, 2011, the 10th anniversary of 9-11, as a voluntary day of service and remembrance, and furthermore, call all citizens and organizations of the Village of Woodridge to consider joining in this observance and engage in activities of tribute, solemn remembrance, and charitable service. Chief, please accept this on behalf of the Village of Woodridge, and it also recognizes uh, the members of the military, the members of your department, particularly our fire services, and our members of the Public Works Department, who day in and day out are subject to these kinds of difficulties. Thank you very much. And we'd also like to call forward uh, Carol Wanschneider and Jill Nichols from the uh, Daughters of the American Revolution. We have a proclamation that we would like to uh, present to both of you. Whereas our founding fathers, in order to secure the blessings of liberty for themselves and their prosperity, did ordain and establish a constitution of the United States of America, where it is of the greatest importance that all citizens fully understand the provisions and principles contained in the Constitution in order to effectively support, preserve, and defend against all enemies. And whereas the 223rd anniversary of the signing of the Constitution provides an historic opportunity for all Americans to remember the achievements of the framers of the Constitution, rights, privileges, and responsibilities they afforded us in this unique document. And whereas the independence guaranteed to American citizens, whether by birth or naturalization, should be celebrated by appropriate ceremonies and activities during Constitution Week, September 16th the 22nd, as designated by proclamation of the President of the United States in accordance with Public Law 915. Now, therefore, I, William F. Murphy, Mayor of the Village of Woodridge, DuPage, Will, in Cook County, Illinois, do hereby proclaim the week of September 16th through the 22nd of 2011 as Constitution Week in the Village of Woodridge and urge all citizens of Woodridge to reflect during this week on the many benefits of our federal Constitution and the privileges and responsibility of American citizenship. Please accept this as a small gesture of our appreciation for everything the DAR does to cause us to continue to focus on things such as the Constitution Week. Congratulations.
Okay, we then turn to questions from the public. We have no formal public hearing this evening. We do, however, have two opportunities for residents and guests to address the board with questions or comments. The first would be for residents and guests who have questions or comments that are not related to the agenda, which will then be followed to an opportunity regarding agenda items. So if there's any resident or guest that would like to address the board on items not related to the agenda, please proceed to the podium and state your name and address for the record. <coughs> Observing no one, then we turn to questions that are related to the agenda. And if there are any guests or residents that would like to address the board, please proceed to the podium. Welcome. My name is Lewis Wharton, 3325 Stillwell Court in Woodridge. And my uh, questions or concerns are addressed to the agenda. R63-2011 to uh, enter into an agreement for consulting services. I read the uh, descriptions on the internet of the, uh, of the background and how this vendor was chosen <coughs> and I recommend that this contract not be entered into because the uh, basic selection process appears to be Flawed. And if you refer to page 53 of the, of the uh, items there, they're the part of the uh, addenda, that there were three companies that responded to the inquiry for these services. company of James Benish did not uh, provide a quotation for the for the six uh, options and they also uh, then uh, provided a uh, revised quote and uh, I didn't see anywhere in here where the other companies were allowed to provide a revised quote. So it looks like we're comparing apples and oranges here. So I think that this process should be gone through again. And if these options are, are viable to the village, then the bidder should be required to bid on them or be disqualified. Or if they are not important to the village, then they should be stricken and uh, everyone is back onto a level playing field. Thank you very much. Certainly, I'm, I'm more than happy to. Ms. Rush. Um, certainly, um, unlike um, a bid um, for equipment or um, goods, uh, when the village has the opportunity to purchase professional services, we're guided by a different statute and a different process um, that allows us the opportunity to take into account the um, professional qualifications um, and um, needs of the community. Um, the actual process provides that you do an interview selection um, in, you know, you get the information, uh, submit an, uh, take the submittals that have been provided by the various firms. Um, you actually do a interview um, to determine uh, the qualifications, and then you have the opportunity to uh, negotiate with the vendor that serves your purposes the best, um, in which case sometimes the scope of work may change. Uh, I believe that's the case in this situation. Um, there was items that uh, were raised during the interview process and during their presentations that were advantageous to us. Um, and there was other items that um, we are not going to be taking advantage of. And that's how we came to our recommendation. Uh, thank you, Ms. Rush. Uh, Mr. Good? In addition to what Ms. Rush and... I'm sorry, sir. Yeah. There, there, please Let sit down. 
In addition to what Ms. Rush indicated, uh, she is correct about this is not a competitive bidding process uh, where your comments would certainly be relevant. Uh, I would also point out that the items that were not bid on were called optional services. There was no requirement that there had to be a quotation for each of those items or any of them. Did you want to comment further? Surely. Thank you. I did contractual work for many years, and when someone puts out a uh, or whatever, and there's options, those are options to the to the person developing that. It's not to the vendors. So to me, this uh, definitely uh, seems counter counterintuitive to 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 uh, doing business in an open and professional manner. Mr. Mayor, Mr. I, I disagree entirely for the board's benefit. Uh, if we were talking about a formal competitive bidding process, uh, the gentleman's comments would be fair and, and well taken. This is not a competitive bidding process. Well, I Please let me finish. It's not a competitive bidding process. Uh, the village could have chosen, because they have a relationship with uh, Mr. Bennis, not to seek any proposals. That's permitted by statute. And when it's optional, it's optional. It's, uh, you're thinking in a bid context. I understand that. And that's appropriate for that context. What you're suggesting is not required in these types of proposal proceedings. OK, well, as a taxpayer, I object to this. Certainly. And when I see that upon the, the revised uh, bid dollars, they just happen to fall within the budgeted amount. OK, so to me, this, uh, I think, needs to be reviewed again, and I highly recommend to the village that they not enter into this agreement at this time. Thank you. I, I would just note for the record that uh, their original payment analysis and their second are both within the village budget. 